Munich. So my fiance was there, and so we left. I left the the uh, the compound, and I went to her apartment and picked her up. We went to the phone station, and she called home, and I called home, and everything. And then we went to McDonald's, and there's a bunch of Americans there. And then I came back through the Black Forest, Kappa deals, the cathedrals, and did the touristy things. And I rode the uh, I rode the uh, train back to the, once I let her off, back to the station. And the only reason I could think is the train stopped short at the station. I was in the very back car with two of the uh, Italian basketball players. It stopped short and let us out behind the barricade. There was like three or four hundred uh, athletes there. And they were saying, move toward the front, you know, and have your three pieces of ID ready. And I'm looking, I'm going like, this is going to take forever. And I could see across the, the parking lot to the garage door open, it was right, you know, close to where our, that, that would have been the way we'd been sliding in every time to, you know, during the Serene Olympics when, when we were, weren't under such a siege. And I could see that garage door opening. So I looked at the two Italian players and I said, let's cut across to the garage. And I said, sure. They were about as, well, I don't know if, if you're dumb when you lead, lead somebody dumb leads you. But uh, I put my back to the door and pushed the panic bar and flipped out. And uh, I call them German soldiers. Uh, I guess the German police, the same thing, that they had the uniforms on and came up to me and he flashed his rifle and he spoke German and I just said no, going to my room and sort of walked through him. And then the next German soldier came up to me, flashed his gun and spoke German. And, uh, and I said, no, going to my room, directly to my room, don't worry. And then by the time I got to the garage door, a German soldier came up to me and he spoke English as well as anybody here. He said, son, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. He says, we're in the process of bringing the hostages out right now. He said, I've got to have you stand against that wall, face it with your hands on it, and, and let us bring out the hostages. I'm going like, oh man. And as I looked to my left, the two Italian players were on the ground with guns through their back. I had a, a rifle in my back and I had my hands to the wall there at the garage door opening or at the garage door opening. And then I could hear them start to bring the hostages out. The, uh, the guy in the green leader suit and the black mask and all that kind of stuff, he stepped around the corner and I looked at him and we were probably 60 feet away. As I looked at him, the German shoulder took the gun out of the small of my back he placed it in the back of the head and he said, I said, face the wall. At this time, my hands are there and I'm looking into the foundation wall and I still see the blemishes today of that wall. And I started praying to God to allow me to get out of this situation, to get you know, back to the room where I needed to be. And so the terrorists started bringing the nine Israeli hostages by me and I could hear the shuffling of the feet and I could hear them crying I could hear them crying I could hear them crying I was so afraid of them crying they were crying they were walking to the dead Thank you very much. I think Doug talked about the team getting their own sense of reality.